Okay, a little bit about me. Uh, first of all, let me ask, how many people here have a drone business? Because maybe you all ought to be doing this talk instead of me. Uh, uh, let me tell you a little about myself. Uh, I grew up in the construction world. Um, been everything from, uh, I'm a carpenter by trade. Uh, I spent 25 years in, or so in the field. Um, came in the office when my body couldn't do it anymore. And I've done everything from being a superintendent to project management to estimating. So kind of run the whole gamut of this thing. Um, started work here. My first, my first estimating job was with a, with, was with a, uh, a residential uh, builder here in town, uh, Lee Summit, um, Pfeiffer King Homes, and then I uh, worked for uh, when a superintendent built 354th Street Grills around this this area, and then went to work for Greenleaf Construction. Greenleaf was no longer in business, but at the time we I was a superintendent for them. Something came up. I said, hey, you could estimate, I, you know, this is what it's going to cost. He said, well, I want you to be my estimator, so I became his estimator. Um, worked there, spent a year and a half in Pensacola doing as a senior project manager on a uh, barracks project at Naval Air Station in Pensacola. Came back home, worked at JPI for a little while, went to United Excel, um, got there, worked there for four years or so, and then just recently went to uh, Black and Veatch. Uh, if you only think about Black and Veatch, you're thinking, why are there estimators at Black and Veatch? Um, as you know, because Black and Beach is primarily an uh, engineering firm, but I work in a new we're, I work in a new business unit. We're about four years old. It's uh, data centers and mission critical, and our our business model is a little bit different than the standard Black and Beach. We actually have construction guys, and not only do we design and engineer data centers, we actually and mission critical facilities. We actually build them. So that's kind of how got into that so that's 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 kind of my journey from here to there doing that got interested in drones I'm a I'm a licensed pilot uh, it costs too much to fly if you're not you know so I kind of quit flying and um, this came up so I looked into it and and basically uh, started getting getting it really um, involved in this uh, the drone program at Black and Veatch is a uh, growth initiative within Black and Veatch they are consciously trying to grow this part of their business to to company to people within the company and possibly outside of the company. Uh, currently, there's about 30 certified pilots and uh, drone pilots, or actually SUAS pilots, in the um, in the program. Uh, we probably have 15, 20 different types of drones. The one we primarily have is either like the one I brought in the back or some variant of that. Works really good for construction. It's relatively inexpensive, and um, and it's easy to fly. Pretty stable, and gives you, you know, gives you what you need. So that's a little bit about me and how I got here. So drones for efficiency, quality assurance, and safety in construction. First of all, at Black and Beach, before we do anything, even when we have <coughs> estimate review board meetings, we have a safety moment. Moment, whatever that is. Well, the ones here for this is just a little bit. First of all. These are some of the rules for flying your aircraft. You cannot fly above 400 feet above the ground. Now there are some exceptions to that, but generally that's your limit. Uh, you can't fly over unprotected people. If you're flying on a construction site, everybody needs to know you're up and doing your work. Know your FAA airspace requirements. Uh, that's, that's a biggie. That's one that's probably gonna get you in trouble quicker than anything else, is not knowing where you are in the airspace. We did a, I did a survey for a piece of land up by the airport, and part of my flight cut into that outer red ring. And so there's ways to do that, but you got to be aware of that. Stay clear of sporting events and stadiums. Um, that's not much different than um, as a private pilot, you cannot fly over stadiums and large people gathering anymore. Since 9-11, that became a no-no. Technically, you stay five miles away from airports. There are exceptions. <clears throat> And you just have to go through the process to get through those exceptions. Uh, give right away to manned aircraft. So your little pot, your drone gives away to everybody. What people don't realize is that the manned aircraft also gives way to hot air balloons. Hot air balloons have the right of way. 
as opposed to engine. And part of the reason is because hot air balloon has no choice where it goes. So and you do. <clears throat> Flying only VLOS, visual line of sight, or use spotters. So by, by FAA regulations, you can only fly that drone as far as you can see. Now, if you're flying it downrange, quarter of a mile, then you might have to have somebody down there looking at it and say, hey, I can still see it. We did some pictures of the um, of our building over on Lamar, and we had a spotter at each of the outside corners. So when they come around, you know, I've got it coming around, just kind of keep an eye on it. And probably a bigger, big thing too, if you're flying for money, you must be part FAA Part 107 certified. <coughs> if you're not and something happens, it could be bad trouble. Now to get your 10, get the 107 certification, it's just studying, understanding the um, airspace, taking the test, taking a written exam, and then you're good to go. But that's our safety moment for the day. These are terminology and abbreviations that you'll see. If you start doing drone stuff, you're going to run into that. B B B B B L O S beyond visual line of sight. That means you can't I can't see it. Control airspace. That's the airspace that is controlled by air traffic control system. And when you're going through this whole thing, you understand how it works, where you are, different types of airports, different types of airspace, what your, which are, what your requirements are. Ground control points. These are things that are used in mapping. If you're doing topo maps or those type of things for a site, you create a, a GPS thing on a, on, a G, on a ground control point so that when the drone is taking flights, it, picks, it has a place where it's really referenced to an earth, and it, and it kind of gives you the place where you the reference where you actually are. <clears throat> Light detection and ranging. It's a LIDAR. Everybody talks about LIDAR now because that's kind of the next big thing in drones. We actually have a LIDAR camera on one of our drones out of, and the guys out of the Carolinas. And it's a site surveying method, but it's, uh, it's a little more sophisticated. It's a heavier piece of equipment, but it, it gives you really good results when you, when you use it like that. Orthomosaic imagery. The drone surveying method where they take pictures of the ground they take a lot of pictures and then they stitch them all together and you out of that you can get topo maps you can get uh, stockpiles those kind of things like that use a lot for site so actually you can use it on job sites too because then you have actually reference to where you are on, uh, especially big job sites <coughs> real-time kinetic kinematic it's another it's a it's a it's probably the up-and-coming thing right now in mapping uh, instead of using ground control points, it's just a radio, a GPS kind of transmitter that takes GPS signals, sends them to the drone, and the drone makes its connection that way in real simple terms. <clears throat> if you're looking in the, uh, in, in the FAA system, you're going to see SUAS, Small Unmanned Aerial System, Aircraft System. That's what the FAA refers to. It's a drone. Okay. <laughs> VLOS, visual line of sight, we talked about that. VTOL, vertical takeoff plane. That's what a helicopter does, that's what that drone does. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about different types of drones, practical uses for drones in the construction injury, uh, industry, current things that B and V offer, and then just a word about some future stuff coming up that we uh, that might be coming down the pipe. Variables and types. Your basic types of drones. You got vertical takeoff and landing, like that one back there. Single rotor or multi rotor. Single rotor, think of a helicopter. Okay? A fixed wing, think of an airplane. And a hybrid is kind of a combination of the two of them. Those are, those, those are really in the in development stage right now. USA, the variables. If you have takeoff and landing, if you have vertical takeoff, you can land, you can hover, you can, okay, for that way. Um, your flight length and endurance, uh, with that drone back there, you probably got about 30 minutes on a good day. Realistically, about 20 on a battery. Uh, speed, that drone will fly probably 25 miles an hour. Uh, some of the other ones will, drop, will fly really fast. In fact, the military drones that everybody thinks of drones fly real fast. Uh, payload capacity, um, if you're an FAA certified uh, pilot, your drone is limited to 55 pounds, including the weight of the drone and all or any payloads. Uh, 
that drone there, the payload is pretty small. The single rotors, they can get bigger. So that's, and then as they get bigger, you can get, as, you, as you're certified to fly different types of drones, your payloads become bigger also. Balance and stability. About the, that's about the most stable thing right now in the air, I don't think. Mainly because of the four rotors. Um, if you're flying a single rotor, obviously you have to be a little bit better at a, at a plane. Um, planes are stable. They fly faster, harder to actually maneuver them in terms of, of control. Uh, USA uh, drones are capable of winding and lock vertically. They're capable of hovering, and they only need a little tiny space. If you're sitting here, that drone could go up here and stay here and just sit right here. In fact, if I were the I had batteries are dead. If we were to start that drone and I tell it to start, it would fly about this high off the ground and just sit there until I tell it to go someplace. Uh, the gas powered ones, we uh, same type of thing, single rotor, gas piled, they have a higher payload capacity, obviously because the drone is bigger in itself. And they're more stable in flight because they actually are heavier. Uh, multi-rotor, that's what that is. We just kind of talked about most of that. The big thing on the multi-rotor, the biggest, probably the most important thing on that on that thing is your camera. If you're going to buy a, if you're going to buy a drone, don't skimp on the camera because the camera is everything. All that engine is for is to get the camera to do something. These obviously, it looks like a fixed wing. Obviously, they need a runway. They need more space and to take off. Now the long endurance because typically they're gas powered and, and they have longer water range. We talked about the hybrid real quick. It's in the process. They're still trying to work out some of the things that, you know, trying to make both things work, the best of both worlds with those. You're going to operate your, your drone in the visual line of sight. We talked about that. And then what is the, the beyond visual line of sight? So if you do that, there are certain things you have to do. Visual line of sight is just what it says. You're watching the drone, and you can see everywhere it went. Beyond visual line of sight, obviously you can't see that. So what you do is you would set up spotters. You do VLS. Actually, Black and Veach here about a month, about three months ago, they did one of the first beyond line of sight drone flights, unmanned drone flights, that's ever been done. They teamed with Ameren and another company, got FAA waivers, and flew the drone down, down range about 15 miles, and then brought it back, down a transmission line. So it's, that's coming, and it's going to be a little more, um, I want to say, a little more detailed, a little more work involved to get there. That is coming down the road. And what's that really helpful for, it's the kind of work that Black and Beach does. We do a lot of transmission lines, a lot of big power. That's very, that'd be very helpful for us. Because if I was to do that, we'd have to go down there and go down so far and then go up and go again. But with those, you could fly down and take your pictures of the old power lines and that type of thing. Practical uses. That's the drone that they flew on the, on the, uh, yeah, uh, first of all, you got your data collection tools. Like, okay, I got all this. Now, what do I do with it? I take on all these pictures. What happens? How do, how do I take the pictures? So, you got to have some way to collect your data. Uh, obviously, you got to have a drone. <clears throat> Flight planning and data analysis apps. Um, there, there are plenty of apps out there. Uh, most of the drones will come with a built in app that's proprietary to that drone. Uh, there's a lot of third parties out there. You probably you use you probably use AirMap for your airspace requirements. I'll go on to try to use the stuff. No, we use AirMap mostly. Yeah, AirMap. AirMap is great for airspace requirements. Yeah. Yeah, there's another one. Uh, Skyward. Skyward. Yeah, Skyward. Yeah, Skyward. Yeah, Skyward. And we were looking. We were actually looking at ground measured ground control as a as a whole platform too. But it's a, it's a way to, uh, that and data analysis apps, you got that, you've got flight planning apps like Leachy, uh, uh, drone deploy, yeah. 
those types of things like that. And then the mapping aids, which kind of ties into all those different apps that are out there. And what's really kind of fun, what's kind of neat about these is that you don't have to, once you get them in and you load them in, you don't have to have a, uh, a Wi-Fi signal. You can just download it to, the, to your, to your uh, iPad, iPad uploads it to the drone, and the drone goes, goes and does its thing. <clears throat> Use the map in pre-construction. This is probably the thing that Black and Veatch is probably um, uh, really looking at right now because sometimes we're looking at large sites, uh, looking you know, for our civil design designers and civil engineers for uh, uh, doing ground uh, mapping for uh, civil takeoff uh, a lot faster than sending a survey crew out there and surveying a 200 acre site. You can put a drone up in the air, and in probably about 45 minutes, you've taken, taken the pictures of a couple hundred acres, and then you go from there. Uh, earthwork volume and topo, same type of thing. You get up there, they can tell you, you can tell you, instead of the contours, you got your pictures, you got all this. You can figure cut and fill quantities off of that. You can actually take pictures of stockpile um, earth for back for backfill or haul off, those types of things. During construction, probably this is probably one that people thinks about think about most of the time is photographic documentation. I know as a superintendent, we used to have to, you know, my, as a as a PM, we used to have to go out and take pictures of everything outside. Of the, you know, but if I'm standing down here and I'm taking a picture of somebody three stories in the air in a building, it doesn't work so good. With the drone, you can actually fly that in there and get that picture. Some of the drones, you can actually stop and hover and zoom in. Get, I mean, if you're going out there and you don't have your hard hat on, I'm going to know it. If I just fly the drone sometime, oh, hey, he doesn't have his hard hat on. That's, that's, that's probably the biggest thing that we're seeing right now that for, for the use of drones on everyday construction type work. The other thing, too, is construction monitoring. You can set your drone up once you have the site. You can set it up, program the flight, and you can fly that exact same flight every week. The exact same. Every week, every day, and document your uh, construction progress. You can also, you know, you could have a conversation too about what percent complete are you? Or what, or if you're talking to the owner, I'm this percent complete. I don't think you are. Yeah, come here, take a look. Yeah, see, I'm that complete. I'm the other thing you can use it for too is checking your uh, your lay down. If you got to place a lot of pipe on the ground, um, equipment, you can you can you can inventory your equipment pretty quickly by flying it around. Talked about the collection tools just released. We've got the the DJI is probably the the big guys in drone manufacturing right now. <clears throat> Applications that we use, we talked about those real quick. The air map, Litchi drone deploy. Uh, what's a ground control point? A ground control point's probably nothing, could be nothing more than a painted line on the ground with a GPS lockdown signal to it from like a, a Trimble GPS signal and give me a cord. <clears throat> RTK is just a fancy way of doing drones with, with ground control points, except you don't have to have so many of them. And you don't have to. You don't have to take the measurements. It's all done through GPS <coughs> and the system. Okay, this is what you're seeing. This is a composite site image. This is what the image looks like from a drone. This is probably this is one of our projects. I don't know which one it is, but it's one of our projects. It's corrected for the Earth curvature, and it gives you accurate measurements. You could actually scale off of that drone, off of that picture. This, anybody's done this, know what this is probably. This is basically what a flight plan would look like a drone deploy if you're going to do a topo or a topo uh, survey. What happens is the drone takes off and it follows this grid pattern. And as it goes back and forth, it overlaps pictures from anywhere from 60, you can set it, but typically around 75% of what this sees that this one sees. So it, it overlaps that. And you get all done doing that, I'm not smart enough to do it, so I sent it to Drone Deploy. And Drone Deploy will stitch all those pixels together, and that's how they come up with a, a 
a topographical map of that site. And it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, if you were to have surveyors go out and take that, it'd take a surveyor a long time. You, you, you were saying the other day, you don't even have to fly the drone. Drone deploy takes it over, right? No, well, no, I fly it, oh. but but, the, the, but I put the um, put the flight plan flight in it, flight plan in it, and I just watch it and make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. And what's really interesting with these things, if that drone, say that drone died about where that uh, little cross piece is, that's probably the ground control point, that little cross piece right there. The drone, if it's getting low on battery, will come back to me, I'll put a new battery in it, and it'll go right back to where it came from and continue the flight. Um, I was flying a, a big site up north looking for a possible development of a, of a piece of land up north. And I lost signal with it, the signal between my controller and the drone. Okay, what am I do now? I guess going. And then when I got signal again, the drone just kept flying the flight that it had inside it until I could pick that up and I could see where it was. So they pretty well fly themselves. Now it's fun to go out sometimes and play with them and they can do this and up and down. That's okay, but if you're really for work and you're you're working for someone and they want precise, accurate images, let the drone do the work. <clears throat> This is just an idea of what a, what a topo map looks like. And this is all shot from, this is a drone that was, that was mapped, uh, this map was produced by, uh, by, the, by drone flights. You can see, you can see the cuts, you can see the fills, you can see, you know, a high array piece, and you get a really good idea about what this, this site looks like. And this is all done. That's the other thing, you don't get this from a survey. You don't get this kind of 3D imagery. Survey. Do this. You can do cloud point data and 3D model generation. You can take your site and put 3D models within it, within the drone, to see how it, see how the things actually sit in the site and how they and how they fit. Site investigation. I got a little video I'm going to show you here in a little bit, but this is, these are just things you can do. You can do equipment survey. We talked about how you can take pictures of all your equipment. How many bulldozers are outside? How many cranes do I have? How many forklifts do I have sitting out there? Um, how much pipe do I have sitting out there? You know, I may have I may have a big apartment. I may have a big uh, multifamily apartment thing going on. How many bundles of studs do I have sitting out there? And you can get those counts just without having to go through. Did I count this one? You can go through, take a picture, go. Oh yeah, there's that. There's that. Okay, we're good. Um, Preliminary structural evaluation. As the superstructure of the, of the project is going up, you can take a drone and fly in close enough to the building and look at bolts, you know, look at bolt, bolt patterns and look at welds and do those types of things. Especially with some of the cameras now that have zooms. The Mavic Pro 2 Zoom, you can pop right in on that and take a look at something. Ongoing construction progress. How many of you have built stuff? I mean, we're all estimators. So those of you who actually have been out in the field building things, and you have to send this whole bunch of pictures into your boss. This is what I did today, or this is what this is where we're at. Well, first of all, he doesn't know what you're looking at. Then you got to take all the time to say this is such and such a place. This is such and with the drone, you could say here you go. You do that with clients too. You do that with owners. Send that into an owner. You take a picture. You do his flights for him. You send. You upload his information. You send it to him. Say, this is what we're looking at. They like that too. I mean, it's one of those things. Okay, I, I'm informed. I'm involved. <coughs> Documenting safety practices. If you're like my company, safety is like hammered into you from the day you're there, from the minute you get there to the minute you leave. Which I'm all for. You know, because everybody we want everybody to go home. Every and it's also like if something happened, you had a drone on flight on site. And for big projects, I would recommend that and just have um, have one on site because if something happens, you can get that thing up in the air in a hurry and go take pictures of the area around that. When I was down in Pensacola, we had an iron worker get hurt. Well, he got hurt because he was doing something stupid. He said he wasn't, but he was. We figured it out. 
But as soon as that happened, we could have popped that drone in the air and say, okay, why, are, why is this step ladder standing on top of this piece of scaffolding and you're trying to pull in a four ton piece of steel? And that's exactly what happened. Progress tracking, safety monitoring, quantities reporting. I can't get over, you know, for those of you who have done these before and you want to get paid, this is a big deal. How much quantity? What have you got done? I got this done. No, you don't. I don't. It's, you know, it's that, always that argument. With, 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 well, yeah, I do. This is where we were last month. This is where we are this month. You can see here, see, here's the site with nothing on it. <laughs> here's the site when things are getting built. And this is the site with the project done. And that's the same picture. So it's pretty, I mean, it, it, they're, these are things that are just technology, I guess we kind of have to embrace the technology. Current offerings. This is what we offer. Tower equipment surveys. This is probably what we do the best <laughs> because this is what we do. And so uh, there's a guy up in uh, Omaha that will actually, he'll go out and take pictures of towers. Now that 400 foot limit, there's exceptions to that. He'll fly the drone up, take pictures all the way around it. Those of you who've been around towers, how long would it take a man to climb up that tower, taking pictures as he's going, and then you know inspect guy wires and do those kinds of things, let alone the safety piece of it. Uh, you know, a drone can probably do that and can expect the tower in probably 10 or 15 minutes. You're talking a day or two for one man to go through the tower. Uh, tower inspections, the equipment, the you know, equipment's looking at making sure all the parts of the tower are there. Site investigations, we, we provide that. Earthwork and site topo surveys, this is probably a big thing that we're involved in right now, is doing that. Construction site monitoring, and then what happens to my data when I, when, once I get it? What happens to it? Where does it go? Here's a picture of tower equipment surveys. We can identify and evaluate tower mounted equipment, evaluate structural equipment supports, evaluate available equipment space. So we can go up and take a look and say, this tower is here, can we put another one in here? Where's our, what's our space requirements? Tower inspections. Structural inspections of cellular utility and wind towers. Safety monitor integrity of structural members without climbing the towers. You can stop the blades on one of these, on one of these wind towers. Go up and just fly that drone up and down those blades and look for structural defects without sending a man up there to do that work. Site investigations. This is a project that we have in, um, I think it's in Hong Kong, <laughs> that started the original, um, uh, did a site evaluation, terrain modeling. This is just the beginnings of starting a site investigation using drone modeling from one of our projects over in the east. We can do quantities. We do model versus actual grading comparisons. In other words, we can we'll create the model. We want to take pictures after you're done, after after the, the earthwork guy is done, and say, okay, what's different than what we had done? What's the quantity differences? And we can measure those. Hard to do that on the ground, but you can do that with with drones and, and the topo um, capabilities. Of and then we do existing graded topographical surveys. This is probably one of the biggest things, one of the uses for drones right now, is the, for uh, large construction projects. Ongoing construction monitoring. Monitoring construct, we do this. We'll provide on, ongoing, or your company will probably provide this too. On, ongoing mo uh, construction monitoring. Hey, we'll make a, you know, you enter into a contract. See, we go out every so often, about once a week or whatever, take pictures of your site, of whatever, what you would like. Document safety concerns. I put that up there. See, that, that would not fly at Black and Veatch right now. Why? Uh, <laughs> because he has no safety glasses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He dropped his hard hat. He's got his gloves. You know, I see this picture and I think of something. I don't know. Back, you all been around here. Remember when they built the Mamba? Yeah. Over. Okay. And they had that like the week before it opened. They had a front page picture of it on, on, in the Springfield paper. I mean, you can't see paper. Huge. They're on, they're on top. A helicopter or something taking a picture. 
and there's two iron workers up there bolting something together. And guess what? Neither one of them was tied off. They had their harnesses on, they had their lanyards clipped in the back, and neither one of them was tied off. Needless to say, OSHA got a little antsy when they saw that. <laughs> they photoshopped it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was even around then. Um, anyway, um, we talked about safety concerns. On, you know, we talked about equipment, and we we'll be able to provide, or at least however you want to do it, cloud hosting services. We typically, um, if you if, typically would suggest to a potential client, we can either do that, or you can, as part of your cost, set up a a program with drone deploy. We'll upload your images to drone deploy. You can go look at them anytime you want. Once, once we put them there, they're there, and they stay there for as long as you're involved in that. You can always archive them, bring them down with the projects when the project is done. Uh, keep in mind that you're talking monstrous data dumps here. Uh, I took a 15-minute video, in 4K video, up on the uh, doing that one site I did. It was like 4K. You know they're they're huge. They're you know they're huge huge files. Better to have somebody else hold them and host them for you than to eat up your server space. Now we can also do something too, where you come up and say, look, I don't want that. I just want you to give me pictures. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll, we'll go take pictures. And here is the media. One thing nice about companies like Drone Deploy, there's other ones out there, is that they will process your photos for you. They will catalog them. Easy to find. I could give you a picture. I go out and take pictures. I can give you an SD card with 200 pictures on it. You won't. It, what, that's not really what you really need. <clears throat> also, too, make sure whoever you use, if you don't use it yourself, don't do the work yourself, make sure your person that you're using is insured. Uh, we at Black and Beach are completely insured. In fact, once a drone pilot gets his, gets his certification, Remember, I keep saying certification. The FAA, the FAA does not license anybody. They certify people. But as soon as you get certification, we go with the company. We tell them. We get them all our paperwork. And then we get put on Black & Beach's insurance. So all our drone pilots are covered under their, under their insurance policy. The drones are covered under their insurance policy. Because the last thing you want to happen is some drone go rogue and crash into something. Or something. So insurance is huge. If you're just some guy out there helping your buddy who has a construction company and you're taking pictures and that drone flies into a Cadillac, that that's just gonna be trouble for everybody. So you know make sure if you're doing this professionally and that you're doing it for your company, you protect yourself, you protect your company. That's that's I, I can't emphasize that. So here we go. We can give it to you. I just gave you your, your card. We can put it in a Dropbox if you want. Uh, we can climb with a cloud, house, a, cloud, a cloud hosting service to store and access your drone. After collection, the contents is loaded up, up to, uploaded to be processed and tagged for client's use. And then you just access it with, a, with an email, I mean with a password, and it's all sitting there and everything's sitting there <laughs> from the whole history of the job. That's the mothership. <laughs> Where are we going from here? Who knows? You know, I mean, who'd have thought that 20 years, even 20, 20 years ago, that we would have these things? You know, it, it's just amazing what's going on with the capabilities, the technologies, and all this is to make our lives easier. Our, I don't want to say easier. Easier sounds right. Our lives more productive make things safer for everybody involved, and to be more profitable as companies. You know, as an estimator, having this information, saying, okay, you know, okay, there's the site. What, what, what issues do I see on this site? Oh yeah, there's that, I gotta keep that in mind. You know, if you've if you're ever done any site takeoff, and you're taking off site work, and you're going, oh man, I understand the contours, but I'm not quite understanding what this really looks like. This is this is invaluable. 
In fact, this piece of land, I can't, I got to talk real nebulous terms because we're bound by NDAs about what this was real about, but we went up and, and the people doing this is, hey, you know, I want to see, there was a little swale in it right in here, and there was a tree line in there. And they go, I really want to see what's in there. I can't see it off, off of Google Earth, and I can't really see it this way. So what I did is I took that drone, and we just flew about 100 feet off the ground and just camp, put that camera right down in those trees right on the outside where, you, where, where the potential owner or developer could see what was there. So those are just things that, that I've done. So everybody, that's kind of my presentation, just to, just to give you an idea about what's out there, what you can do. I mean, we're looking to, like I said, we're trying to grow this part of our business a little bit. There's other companies out there that do this all the time. Uh, I think you're doing your company, you would do your company a service if you went and talked to them and said, hey, look, let's look at this. That drone right there is about two grand. Two grand, probably get somebody to certified to fly the thing. Probably another couple, three hundred bucks. You could do your own. You could do your own thing, you know. And, and the hosting services and all that are all available there. Or you can pay somebody to do that for you, and you don't have the headaches or worries about it. But there's, there's a lot of good stuff that's there, and we've got some people here that own drone businesses that do this type of thing. We are really big on construction. Not so much building inspections and those kinds of things, that's not the kind of work. But inspecting, doing ground, doing surveys, doing construction progress, doing those kinds of things for, you know, for all types. We're, we're, we're really big in, in, in heavy industrial, electrical and power things, water treatment facilities, those kinds of things like that. So that's really what we are looking to do. Other people can do other things with this, uh, but it's great technology. 